What is going on, lovely people? Welcome back to Fish for Thought. Hope your Monday's going just right. It's about to get better with Fish Tank Review. Now I'm about to show you something and you guys are gonna be like, Fish Tank Review has been a lie my whole life. My whole three years of living. That's about as long as Fish Tank Review has been around. Rest assured, three year olds all over the globe. Anyway, back on topic. What would you think I would rate this fish tank? Yeah, probably like in the negatives. I would use some imaginary numbers, but think again. This is five out of five. Why? Is this algae unhealthy for my guppies? No, it's actually 100% healthy. Don't get me wrong, it's not a five out of five scape score officially, but for the purpose, for the health of its inhabitants, which should come first? That is number one priority and number Number one reason why a fish tank might be considered a 5 out of 5. I would never in my life rate a fish tank that is not conducive to its inhabitants a 5 out of 5 or anything higher than a 3.5 I would imagine. Usually it takes a heavy toll on the score if the husbandry is not on point. To answer your question, the green water is actually a great food source for your guppies. Exactly. Especially because they rear so many young all the time. The young will always have something to eat, something to gobble on. Green water is like the holy grail of goldfish breeders too. Goldfish fry just love them. And adult goldfish as well. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, except for how it looks. It looks like Mountain Dew. It won't harm them at all? No, it's harmless. Green water is free-floating algae that is too fine for your filter to clean up, hence why it has taken over your tank. It doesn't get filtered out. There are a couple options for getting rid of it. You can buy a UV sterilizer. I would highly recommend my Fluval UV sterilizer in line with the canister filter. That is one of the best things Fluval has given me. Go check them out. This episode is not sponsored by Fluval or anything, but they do make great stuff. Very high quality, reflected by the higher price but you pay for what you get. You can also turn off the light or leave the light on less to big water changes because it'll replace the green water with clear water unless your tap water has become green water. You can also not fertilize the water column. You keep the lights low and don't feed for a few days. Yep, your guppies will be perfectly fine. They don't have to eat every day, especially if there's green water around, because that's permanent food in there. I've not long gotten into the hobby, but I have learned that guppies just thrive out of spite. <laughs> yeah, they'll live in anything, pretty much. Often find themselves in abusive relationships with their owners because they just survive everything and the owner thinks it's okay. That's radioactive. About to get mutated guppies. Live Daphnia is also great for this purpose and you can use them to feed the fish too. That is crazy of an idea. How long do you have the lights on? 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. There is your answer to everything. Set a timer for your tank. No shame in the reduced lighting game. That's perfect for fry and fan feeding shrimp. I misread this as this is perfect for pan frying shrimp. <laughs> Almost vomit. That'll do it. Mm, that extra infused algae taste. This just goes to show there are haters on FTR sometimes. I'm assuming they're like six to eight year olds. I'm not rating this tank a zero out of five and instead a five out of five. Sure, this tank looks like a zero or one out of five on the aesthetics. That doesn't even matter. As long as you're taking care of your fish, that's what matters. Not what I think about how a fish tank looks. That being said, this tank is sent in by Cliffman. It's a 47 gallon dirted Wallstead Aquarium. That is music to my ears, bro. You don't know how much that tickles my insides. Look at the dwarf sag. It has taken over. Beautiful dwarf sag carpet, some red roof floaters up top. This mossy sort of hardscape is crazy. It's a 47 gallon for goodness sake. You know how hard it is to plant it up this tight? It's making it look like a five gallon. No, it's huge. It's a big ass tank. And it's understocked as well at that, which is one of my favorite ways to stock a tank, at least in my opinion, because it only has five panacories. There's a honey grammy in there. There's some emerald dwarf rasboras and some shrimp reading like crazy in there. 4.92 out of five scape score, keep it up. Thank you to the sponsor of this video, you guys, for supporting FFT. Special shout out to our patrons for making everything possible. You guys are the true heroes. If you want to become a patron yourself and join the thousand plus fish keeping discord, be my guest. Bye. A blue snow better, you say? <laughs> you had one job, man. <laughs> Why? Ah, uh, the rare scarlet blue snow beta. It cancels it out. Gosh darn it. Imagine you phone up the place because you've heard there's a blue snow beta coming in. Call them to confirm. Yes, the blue snow beta finally came. Drive all the way down to the local fish store and you look at it and you see a red beta, as red as they come. How are you going to tell your friends about your new blue snow beta? They're going to think you're trolling them to hell. This tank sent in by Stolen Jelly. It is a five gallon. It's got a solo betta fish called Azula. Not one of my favorite characters from Atla. Interesting hardscape. I've never really seen this too much, but they've uh, hand glued some rock caves with some smaller pebbles and it's aquarium safe glue. That's yeah, a nice start. You have some woodscape in there. I'm pretty sure your betta fish, which, which looks more like a blue snow betta than the last one, is having a great time in there. A 3.2 for now, keep it up. My local Petco seems to be under new leadership. Betta king. At least 10 gallon tank. Woo!
Ooh, that's what we're waiting for. That's what it's all about. Where's Millie? Where's Millie when you need her? Needs filter plus heater, plant, live, or silk. Not even the plastic ones. All better are king and should be treated as a king and queens and whatever they identify as. The wet spot is now selling con... What? Tropical fish cunt. This has to be a April full stroke, right? They know we're way past April, right? What's going on here? Is this for real? Because that's kind of ingenious, not gonna lie. The real solution to guppy breeding problem. Damn, the comments are going wild up in here. There's a good fish store. You get your morning wood from there as well. Comment so funny, I'm willing to overlook this grammatical error. Totally unnecessary. Droning on about my aquariums is all the birth control I ever need. A truer word have never been said. This wise saint definitely got their PhD in wizardry and warlockery 60 year old version right there where fish come first <laughs> dude you wow that's great marketing a wet spot should hire you they should hire all four of these guys these chads Slow clap for the respect. This tank is sent in by Soul Dad Arias Eller. Sounds like some anime character that got isekai'd into like a kingdom world. Incredible. This is a crazy black water biotope. Even got a couple fish in there. A lot of snails. Such naturalistic feel to it. Created by the branches. Some finer branches and detailing littered on the substrate. Even the plant choice. I'm not really sure what kind of plant this is. Might be Pogo Octopus or some sort of Sagittarius, maybe Vallis. This is getting my five out of five. Absolutely. Dimly lit like it should be for a blackwater biotope. Everything just looks really natural. Very faithful to a Rio de Janeiro, maybe Amazonian blackwater biotope system. Keep up the great work, Soldad Arias Eller. Subarashi. <laughs> when you're non-confrontational. Oh boy, that's a lot of parasitics in a tank. <laughs> found the introvert. But man, what's going on in the beginning there? Is this a new tank? I would imagine it's highly stressful for the fish to constantly be fighting over territory like this. Maybe give more space and more territory to each fish so they don't have to keep fighting. Although this is kind of funny and a meme, um, the fish that is not very confrontational is very likely that is constantly being bullied because it's much smaller than the other fish. Gotta really make sure when you see this, take this as a good example and a teaching moment, I guess. If you see this in the wild or if you're experiencing this by yourself in your own tank, usually happens with fish like Malawi cichlids. If one of them is up in the corner, it's been driven there. It's being kept there by all the other bigger fish. You wanna make sure it gets fed because that's the biggest problem. It gets underfed and it dies. Or it just gets killed, straight up killed by the other fish. Provide more area, provide more space, provide more habitat diversity in the form of hardscape, more holes and stuff like that. If nothing works, time to give them away so it doesn't at least just die. WTF are these. They're groovy groovers, bro. They're getting it on. Look at that. The Malaysian trumpet snow is into it. There's a party in the USA in that little corner of the substrate that you didn't even know about. They're just detritus worms and they're usually harmless. Unless a super big population explosion, then something might become harmful. Usually still harmless. It's the planaria you gotta worry about. <laughs> they will f your sh up. This new trend, wow. I'm a supporter of this new trend, bro. Not only does it give a new perspective to how you view the fish and how the fish can view you, it also ups the water gallons, even if it's just by a little bit. And it's just so neat, unless there's like a malfunction. So make sure you set it up right and solid. I hope this trend never dies. It's just a fun time for the fish and for the owner. Beautiful. My friend's family member didn't want to take care of them. Smell. So the tank got dumped onto my friend. They're trying to keep them alive, but I don't even know what to suggest aside from make a friend with a pond in a bucket. Oh man, that doesn't get much worse, the situation. Oh, but there is an update. Learned there's another family member with a backyard pond. So hopefully that guy takes them in. I would think so too. They're already starting to gasp for air. This tank is way, way, way too small for four of these big water puppers. Maybe it wouldn't smell if you did some research and knew exactly how to take care of fish. It's not rocket science. A few full-fledged adults, I'm sure you can make it work amongst the few of you to beat out the intelligence of a 13-year-old back when Google wasn't even that popularized. Tank at a friend's house. Come on, bro. Oh, there goes my fidget toy. How would you think that's a good idea? This guy read for two seconds on Google, turtles need a basking area and decided, oh, that, okay, I got a basking area. Quick solution. <laughs> Why? Why spend only two seconds and then stop at the basking area? What about everything else? What about the minimum tank size. What about a heat lamp, UVB lamp for the basking area? Out of your budget? Don't get a turtle then. No more friend. Exactly. This tank is sent in by Squiggles featuring their Senegal Bashir. Used to call them bikers. <laughs> the biker gang. Up to no good. We also got Bristlenose Pleco in there and they're planning to get a African butterfly fish which are super cool and they're gonna dominate the top column of your water. Gonna fill in this tank very nicely. The live plants, it's great. Very brave of you because I think Bashirs are not very plant friendly. Beautiful fish though. They're like pretty prehistoric dinosaur. Four out of five, keep it up. Koi fish always travel in groups of four. If attacked, koi A, B, and C will scatter, leaving behind the decoy. 
This is Doug. He hit for the first eight months I had him. Started coming out about two weeks ago and I've seen him every day since. Looks to me like a pleco, but one of the most gorgeous ones I've ever seen. What is that coloration? What number is this pleco? I must know. And does it get big? I'm so glad Doug has taken to your tank finally. Can I have any fish in seven liter aquarium? First of all, your aquarium is insane. I know you didn't want this rated, but five out of five, no harm done. Don't come after me for that rating. Maybe you strongly, very passionately feel like it's a 4.7 and I have just destroyed you and your life by rating it a five instead of 4.7. In that case, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous out here, folks. Now, seven liter to gallon. 1.8 US gallons? No, 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 no. No fish, no fish. And I think you divided it in half. Quick Asian math, 0.9 gallons. Maybe a shrimp or snail only tank? That would suffice. My local pet store has iridescent sharks and sell them for only $5. Holy crap, that is dangerous. That's beyond dangerous. Maybe show them pictures like this. This is an albino iridescent shark, yeah. And I don't even think that's max size. That is crazy. For $5, you're just getting pure fish abuse. I'm not 100% sure what this big ass beautiful fish in the front is. Might be a hoplo or a shovel nose catfish, but in the back, you can see a normal iridescent shark and it's the same size as a red tail catfish on the bottom there. So show them these kind of pictures. Maybe that'll change people's minds. Why is it so accessible to get a fish that gets bigger than I can fit in the screen right now? When there's a lot, there's like countless other options for actual nano fish that fit in these tanks. I will never get that concept. Frito has a brand new hat. Not what I was expecting. <laughs> Great name for Frito, by the way. Also, that's a Chinese algae eater. Probably saving the poor little Sinclair's for dinner or later actually. Rest in peace. And rest in peace this episode because we've come to the end. Welcome back. Hope this episode made your Monday go just a little better. Don't worry, next week we're back with it again. That's right, you won't believe it. FTR every week? That's the new schedule. Game changing. I know. It's time for Kotwa. Question of the week is, summer's about to be over. What is your favorite fall activity? Let me know so I can pick up a few new hobbies as well. If you enjoyed this episode, please smash that like button and subscribe. There'll be more videos to come and don't forget to get your hands wet. Tetra, 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 we in a spot coming in hot. Ventral fin die, acclimate that. With my shoal at, cure my fin rod from Carisiformes to Parancha Road on. Hold on, there's not another fish that you can wish for. Live fam says, I finna one, I finna gone. Three days without fur, I'm an addict, like fanatic. I'm a baddest, no tabs, only dirt. My Cory gang so loyal, black Tetra go skirt. We came to play, came to silence, gang.